So the Academy announced Oscar nominations recently and they're just off. Now a little bit of background first because I feel like whatever I say it is going to piss some people off. So just a disclaimer, I am actually qualified to speak on this. I have a degree in film studies and I also have a degree in film directing so I feel like if anyone should have something to say about this it could be me as well. <laughs> I used to wake up in the middle of a dark Polish night every year to watch the ceremony since I was 16 years of age and during my film studies I would watch every single film that was nominated in the main category and, and also sometimes some other films from the other categories like I was obsessed. Well, maybe not as much as some of my course mates, but I was into it. And even though my interest in the Oscars has waned a little over the years, like I don't get up at night anymore because I feel like the galas are just not that interesting, I still have the basic knowledge that I gained over the years of what sort of films get nominated, what sort of films win, etc. So now that we have established that, <laughs> let's talk about the drama. On one side of the conflict we have the Academy, a prestigious, world-renowned organization that is also extremely backwards in many ways. They have received a lot of criticism over the past couple of years for keeping the awards very male and white. And I mean, you can't even argue about that because when you look at the lists of nominees and the films that got nominated, it's just a confirmation of what people have been saying. Things are not looking fantastic and they have been trying to make amends for a while, which I I personally think is pure PR, like they don't, absolutely don't care about all that. They just don't want to get cancelled. So they have been trying to introduce more diversity in the way they select nominees. But in terms of female directors, let's let's go back a bit. Let's go back a bit. So 2009, Catherine Bigelow has won Best Director as a first woman ever, 2009. And until 2020, she remained the only woman to ever achieve that. I mean, achieve that. Be allowed that would be a better way to phrase I remember as a teen checking the best director category each year and each year I would be disappointed at how it's just men. And one could argue it was because none of the big or successful movies were directed by women, but teenage me couldn't help but think, is it because women are just not good enough to direct big movies or is it because they're just not given that opportunity? Now on the other side of the conflict we have the Barbie movie. The highest grossing movie of 2023. Definitely a cultural moment. From the biggest marketing campaign I have ever witnessed in my life for a movie, to the plethora of memes and controversies and all that stuff. Love it or hate it, it was the shit. <laughs> Barbie was the shit of 2023. Don't get me wrong, I'm actually not a massive fan of the movie itself. Like, it was fun. It had its moments. It was a little tiring. It was a little cheesy sometimes. Definitely not my favorite movie. America Ferrera's monologue sounded like something out of a Facebook comment section, so it wasn't that groundbreaking to me. I didn't understand why there was a need for so many subplots. And for the last hour, I just kind of wanted the film to end. But do I understand that pop culture significance of the movie? Absolutely. Was sitting in a movie theater packed with girlies wearing pink a life-changing experience? Of course, it was groundbreaking. I have never felt so female. <laughs> but one thing I was certain when I left the cinema, regardless of what I thought about the movie, was that it was Greta's film. Since my background is in film directing, I always pay extra attention to this. How much of the director can we feel when watching the movie? How many conscious directorial choices can we notice and appreciate? How much does the movie feel in control of the director? And with Barbie, the answer to all these questions is, 100%. It's the ultimate director's film. It's a portfolio. It's, it's everything a director would want to direct. Greta put as much of her in the movie as humanly possible and I'm not even talking like work-wise because of course there is hundreds if not thousands of people that have worked on this movie and worked hard on it but it's all glued together by the director's vision and Greta is a really strong glue that's what I'm saying <laughs> this is why when I read the list of this year's nominees I was pissed because if this is not Oscar-worthy directorial work 
I don't know what is. One of the reasons behind the Academy's decision to not include Greta could be that Barbie is a comedy movie and comedies are usually looked down upon on the Oscars. Like we all know what perfect Oscar worthy movie is. It's a TV biopic where the main character, who is also a very popular actor, undergoes a severe physical transformation for the role. And then we also have like a couple of really good supporting actors, a really good monologue and a really strong argument scene. <laughs> but then this argument doesn't really stand because comedies also do really good at Oscars. If you look at recent years, films like Birdman, Green Book, Coda, and Everything Everywhere All at Once were all major hits. And so was Barbie. I mean, scoring a nomination or a couple of nominations in each of the main categories is huge. And I think in terms of it being a comedy, the strength of the movie is that it's actually pretty intellectual. Like in between the funny scenes and the, the catchy one-liners, there are some solid films philosophical questions. And like the previous Best Picture winners that were comedies, Barbie is also not just a fun movie for the girlies. Which is why I think the, the comedy argument doesn't really work here. Some say that, oh, it's because there is 10 Best Picture nominees and the Best Directing category can only fit five people. But my question is, why do we consider other nominees more worthy than Greta? On a purely professional level, she did an excellent, exceedingly excellent job. So my question is, did the big male names get nominated because that's what we think directing should look like? We may be used to directing like Scorsese and Nolan do it, but it doesn't mean Greta's job is less valid. Directing is directing and it was never supposed to be limited to just one particular style or one genre. And if what we see on the screen is not enough proof, just listening to Greta talk about the movie gives you a clear idea of how much thought and passion she put into the project. It, it does something that I wanted to emulate, which it's, it's these incredible sound stages and these painted skies and, and this sense of, I say, authentically artificial, which I think is very beautiful and emotional. And I, I think of the painted backdrop of the Emerald City as they go towards it. And we put, you know, in our movie, we have like the pink brick road instead of the yellow brick road. And we have, um, I mean, we do, we also have beautiful painted backdrops of horizons and, and we did it, we executed it like they would have done in the you know 30s and 40s. And it's also worth noting that the way the Academy works is members from each branch pick nominees for each branch. So the best director nominees are picked by directors. So if they have a specific storytelling style or word building style in mind, they might be a little biased. And and if that's not enough proof that something is off, let's look back a little because there is a little pattern here. In 1986, Children of a Lesser God was nominated for five Oscars, including Best Picture, but Randa Haynes was not nominated for Best Directing. Barbara Streisand's Yentl was nominated for five Oscars, but not for Best Directing. Awakenings by Penny Marshall was nominated in three categories, but not Best Directing. Winter's Bone was nominated in four categories, uh, but Deborah Granick was not nominated for Directing. And Catherine Bigelow might be the first Best Directing female winner, but it doesn't change the fact that in 2013, when Zero Dark Thirty was nominated in five categories, and I remember it being talked about a lot, and it was definitely a heated topic and, and a movie that had an impact that year, she didn't get a chance to win again because she wasn't nominated for Best Director. And finally, Greta's uh, previous film, Little Women, was nominated in seven categories and again, not for Best Directing. So the question here is, would that also happen if they were men? <laughs> because personally, I think it's very unlikely that a man-made movie would sweep the Oscars in most of the main categories multiple times because Greta's debut, uh, Lady Bird, was also nominated for the Oscars. So can we imagine a man directing several Oscar-nominated movies and not being nominated for Best Directing? There is also multiple cases of women winning awards from the Directors Guild of America for the Best Debut or the Best Movie of the Year and then not being included in the Oscar race. Of course, I'm 
not saying that every female director deserves an Oscar nod just because she's a girl. But when it's a critically acclaimed and outstanding entry and everyone is talking about it and it has a massive impact, it's well received, it has raving reviews, I think it's just suspicious. I think it's suspicious how women are never considered true artists. I have dealt with it myself because despite the fact that I am a film director by profession, the only times I was ever asked to work on a movie or like a, on a film set was to do to help with costumes and yeah obviously that's also what I do but but the only times people reached out to me to help be involved in any sort of film work was in the costume department or as an extra but keeping my personal grudges aside, let's move on to the canon Barbie conflict. Let's get this thing straight. Ryan Gosling deserved this nomination. Yes, it is a movie about Barbie and yet Ken was the most interesting character. I There, I said it. He was just more interesting. Half of it is writing because he just had a more interesting character arc, but the other half is just Gosling. And he did what I think comedy should be. He created a well-rounded, hilarious character. I feel like comedy should be this kind of characters where every word that they utter make you laugh uncontrollably. He stole every scene he was in. 100%. I was ashamed that I ever questioned the casting because I thought he's too old for the role. Shame on you, Carolina from the past. I take it all back. He was Ken. Was it Margot Robbie Barbie? Absolutely. Absolutely. She was, she is, and she forever will be. Amen. I don't think that's a role that we will easily forget. I think Margot Robbie as Barbie is a cinematic visual symbol that is imprinted in our brains right now and it is imprinted for years to come. She embodied everything we associate with Barbie and so much more and bless her for it. That being said, the Oscars are awarded for outstanding work. It was a beautiful nuanced performance that made the movie what it is, but partly due to being contained to playing a doll, it was not really Oscar material. Don't get me wrong, Margot Robbie is absolutely an outstanding actress, one of the best of the best, top top A-list for sure, and she has proved this in every role that we've seen her in, she's always absolutely captivating. But this was not an outstanding role, I would say. Again, it mostly comes down to writing. Barbie goes on a beautiful journey throughout the movie, but ultimately she is stereotypical Barbie. Like, that's the point of the character. And the scenes that she was involved in just did not bring out Margot's full potential. It's ironic because we feel sympathy for Barbie and we root for her and we associate with her on some level, especially that of feminine experience, but at the end of the day, she is beautiful, successful and rich. <laughs> and we just resonate more with Ken, who is ridiculous, a little stupid, lacks self-confidence and desperately wants to be loved. Like, that's more who we are. And I will admit, when I left the cinema, the first thing that me and my friends talked about was Ryan Gosling as Ken. And I think one of my friends said, wouldn't it be ironic if he won an Oscar for this? It totally would! It totally would. And the fact that of all the massive marketing, all of the franchise and all of the plot that is so female-centered and deals with patriarchy and what it is to be a woman, it is like a modern feminist manifesto and a beginner's lesson in feminist theory. The thing that we remember the most is I'm just Ken. <laughs> it is ironic as Boy, it is ironic. It proves the movie's whole point. It does. Accidentally, but it does. It is literally something that could be a scene in the movie and if Barbie 2 ever comes out, I dearly hope that they would do some sort of easter egg about the whole situation because it's ridiculous. It is. And yet, all of the feminist context aside, he was just this good. And I am genuinely rooting for him to win because again, comedy doesn't have it easy at the Oscars. In the end, Ken was still created by Greta, co-written by her and directed by her. So it is her triumph almost as much as it is Ryan's. Barbie was still nominated for Best Picture, so it's not like it's getting snubbed. It's also fighting in the Best Adapted Screenplay category, Best Costume Design, Best Production Design. It has 
two nominations for Best Original Song. Yes, one of which is I'm Just Ken, but the other one is Billie Eilish's What Was I Made For? And America Ferrera is nominated as Best Supporting Actress. So despite all of the controversy, it seems like it was still appreciated by the Academy, which considering Academy's previous treatment of large popular franchises, it seems like a nice change. <laughs> still, by the end of the day, we can't help but go, really? Really? Are we really doing this? <laughs> anyway, let me know what you think. And we'll also see how this video ages in about two months when the ceremony takes place and we'll see whether or not Ken is just Ken or if he is an Oscar winner. So this is all. Thank you so much. And... Uh...